Hey everyone, Prince getting it at it again with an intro to an in-depth interview with Jamal Johnson. <laughs> Why am I making an intro to this interview, you may ask? Well, it is because there are some things I don't want people to be lost in translation for whatever we are conveying. Plus, it is a two-hour two interview, interview, which may seem extremely boring, and I want to go over the lingo that would make it easier for people to comprehend. <laughs> Number one! This is about the first court case under the United States of Chonoka Constitution in the image stage. Why call it the image? Well, it's substantial if we got some dirt. But we don't. But hey, it doesn't mean that we can't exercise the spirit of it. And number two, Jamal's the first plaintiff and Loris is the first defendant under this constitution. What an honor. And number three, we talk a lot about those things that look like humans. You know, they are part of a hierarchy and got them wings with no peepees. What you call them? Oh yeah, archangels. So when we talk about how we interact with archangels, we are not saying, ooh, ooh, we talk to spirits. No! We are simply talking about physical human beings that are in a public servant position, like a government official, or in this case, a church official, who work in a similar position to that of the archangel. An archangel's boss is God and his children, and a church official's boss is God and his people. Not only do we talk about the position, but also the spiritual psychology of the archangel on how their mind operates and the way they behave based on what we learn from the DP. We talk about some that behave in good archangelic ways and bad archangelic ways. So by no means is this personal, but it is a beautiful growing process for everyone to understand, both for people who work in that position and the citizens of the kingdom to know the dynamic, healthy relationship we should have in order to organically realize God's kingdom to come. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Peace out. Hey everybody, my name is Kenny Rauchy and this is Jamal Johnson. And today we're gonna be talking about a lawsuit a lawsuit between you and Lori Schwartz? Yeah? Okay. So, so uh, I know everyone heard about this, uh, about about Jamal and Lourdes and this boxing match with uh, this lawsuit that's, that's happening, right? And uh, this is really important because this is the first time in Channel Cook history that we have our plaintiff here, right? and our first defendant, right, exercising, you could say, this constitution or the image age or the ecclesiastes, right, before the fulfillment of a substantial ideal kingdom that we all long to see. So, from my understanding, Uncle Jamal, is uh, there's, there's some people that may have misconceptions of you being a uh, uh, a crazy hardcore uh, attacker in a way or you're attacking Lourdes or you know or uh, you're, you're being a bully right now now here's the thing um, and and also or or also you're you're making things very public right now now do you do you um, my question to you is is there any other way you could have used some way to solve the dispute between you and Loris? Uh, why does it have to come to uh, you using the power of the Constitution to put yourselves in this position? Um, okay, so there's a number of issues there. There's the issue of people's perception of me. There's the issue of um, was there a recourse uh, to this uh, current action, uh, court action. Um, did I try that? Um, what made this um, the choice to make for me um, doing a court action? Um, well, the first one, people's perception of me. Um, people think all kinds of things because um, I'm, I'm a what you see is what you get kind of person. And in this world, people often have to second guess uh, what people really mean in the world of passive aggression, where you know people pretend and not to not to be mad, but find some way to extract punishment from you, you know, uh, or dish out punishment. Like I just don't play those games. I, I I just feel like I don't like playing those games. It's sort of like um, an emotional traffic jam. 
uh, when when we play those like slow development games so I'd rather just sort of pull the band-aid off I'm more towards that end of the spectrum and people feel like you know I'm, I'm a bully the problem with me being this way is uh, that people weren't ready to if people weren't ready to be responsible for like their feelings in a dispute or in some kind of a tense situation and you're 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 basically forcing them to to deal with it. Well, that's because I don't want to participate in in, in, in games, and um, you know I don't want to play. I don't want to sit there while people play coy and act like they weren't upset by whatever the issue was. I'm like, okay, I know you're upset. Let's just let's just jump in and deal with it. Um, if people were gonna, you know. You know, I've had people do that with me. They think <laughs> during this this whole these few months, people swear that I'm talking about Lourdes when I'm not talking about Lourdes, for example. So they're actually returning to me, you know, that which I dish out. You know, I, I, I they just jump in there, and I say, and I can tell them, yeah, you're right, I am talking about Lourdes, or, or no, no, I'm not actually talking about. But we're growing as a community because as a community, somehow we have to learn to stop playing this long drawn out uh, game because we're pretending not to be caned out. It's, it's sort of like a remnant from the restoration era where you can't afford to be blacklisted because if you're a bad cane, you know, then your whole church career is shot. So you're not actually allowed to be angry and all this kind of stuff. Well, I just put that away and then I'm not playing that game. Doesn't mean I hate anybody. It just means I want to talk straight because I don't want to be here longer than I have to be. Right. right. Um, now, as far as... Um, Wait, as far as... The, the, uh, how, how come... Were, were there any, any other means that you could have used to solve this dispute between you and Lourdes? Why, why did you have to use the power of the Constitution? Well, on March 6th, uh, Hyung Jin Im, uh, on March 6th, uh, 2016, Hyung Jin Im, I uh, gave a sermon about the many people that came and bothered him or uh, petitioned him about uh, Lord of Swords. And he said Robert and Jamal were the only two people that went to her boss, uh, her benefactor, Kutchenin, uh personally. Okay? Um, what he suggested dealing with, you know, the Christian method of, you know, talk to the person first. Second, bring two witnesses. Third, uh, go to the church, and if the person doesn't change bad behavior, uh, the fourth uh, suggestion in, in Matthew is uh, ostracism. Treat them like a tax collector. Okay? So, the day after, I had suggested to Richard Panzer uh, to use a conflict resolution um, model that my wife and I used uh, back in Indiana for uh, some members that had uh, deep, 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 deep disputes. Um, you know, one where, you know, one sister was on her deathbed and, and, and the other sister couldn't forgive her for something. I mean, like, we, my wife and I really used this, this model, this conflict resolution model. And uh, so I suggested to Richard Panzer that he play the role of moderator and, um, you know, went over the, um, you know, the protocols. And so uh, he notified Lourdes, and we entered into a Zoom, two days of Zoom conflict resolution talks. Um, uh, so yeah, I did try try that method, and um, yeah, what what happened afterwards? Well, at least I was satisfied in being understood, and I think it was an opportunity for me to caution her about bad behavior um, and I think the behavior that I cited was uh, Hyung Jin clearly said that he liked the contribution that I had been making online while she was absolutely certain that the, the, the harsh language that I used was completely intolerable um, he didn't have that sentiment and he clearly expressed to us that it not only was uh, tolerable, but that if um, she pulled the rug out from under me, 
um, that it would help the other side. Now, I think she... I think that she was beholden to the opinions of our enemies, of, of, of family fetters who had no intention, you know, of, 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 of coming over to sanctuary. They're still not in sanctuary. But on the belief that they might, she was willing to squeeze me in a way that the pastor said, it's not necessary to squeeze me. And that squeezing took the form of banning. So I told her that the act of just flippantly disobeying the pastor because, y y you know, your opinion trumps his or something is sort of Han motherish. And I made that, that point. And, you know, um, so uh, I was just happy that she officially understood uh, or, or was able to take in my clear warning that this type of behavior is a danger because you're second guessing and even overriding the pastor and his suggestions on how how to do things. That that's not something you just want to take lightly, you know. So I was happy because I I wasn't into squeezing her or forcing her. I was just into communication. I right. Say, hey, and, do you, and, do you? yeah. So this was your private communication between you, her, and I think Richard was the the third party member. Yeah. You said, right. So. Um, so, so actually, there were some things that you did before using the power of the Constitution, yeah. which 